Hi, my name is Amanda and today I'll be talking to you about your experiment, calorimetry, determining the uh, heat of solution. In this experiment, you will be ultimately determining the heat of solution for two uh, salts. The way that you will do this is using a uh, styrofoam-based uh, calorimeter. So it looks kind of something like this. We've got a, um, a tube sort of surrounded by um, a styrofoam block. And the reason we use styrofoam is because it's a good insulator. It, it's very good at uh, containing uh, heat that's generated by a solution. We're also going to be uh, monitoring its temperature using a uh, vernier temperature probe. And uh, this is basically going to sit in the calorimeter and allow us to take measurements using the Logger Pro software on the laptop computer. So we're first going to load up the Logger Pro software on the uh, laptop. And we're going to set up the uh, collection method. So we're going to go into experiment and then select data collection. And a window like this will pop up. You're going to change the length to 300 seconds and the sampling rate to one sample per second. And also check to make sure that continuous data collection is checked. And select done. So now the program is set up to run your experiments. And now we're going to set up the actual apparatus itself. So the first part of the experiment uh, involves calibrating our uh, calorimeter. And the reason we want to calibrate it is we need to determine um, its ability to contain heat. This is otherwise known as its uh, heat capacity. So to do this, what we're going to do is take 15 milliliters of room temperature water. And we're going to measure this out with a graduated cylinder. And we're going to um, put our water in the calorimeter. And then we're going to put the temperature probe on the calorimeter. Whenever you handle the probe in the calorimeter, you always want to make sure you handle it by the, uh, the top here where the tubing sticks out. Um, and then when you put the probe in, you sort of want to press down a little bit and then kind of twist it. And this just forms a good seal on the top and also ensures that the tubing that's uh, inside the styrofoam block doesn't start moving around and introducing kind of a leak in your calorimeter. So you always want to handle it by the top of the tube anytime you're removing or replacing the, the probe, OK? So then you're going to click Collect on your Logger Pro software, and you're going to shake the calorimeter. When you shake it, hold the cable uh, with one hand and sort of hold the calorimeter like so with the other hand just to keep it stable, and then you're going to shake up and down for 60 seconds. And you'll see on the Logger Pro uh, software that uh, it'll, it'll keep count of the time and the temperature that, that it's at. When you get to about 60 seconds, you'll just set the calorimeter down on the bench and um, let it sit for about another 100 seconds um, to allow the uh, temperature to equilibrate. In the meantime, what you can do is get a hot plate set up with some water and make sure that it's heated roughly around 60 or 70 degrees. So now we've come up on the 125 and counting. So we're almost there. And when it reaches around 160, you're going to want to record the temperature value uh, that's displayed in the software. This corresponds to your initial temperature of your cool water or room temp water. In the next step, you're going to take uh, some of your heated uh, water. So if we take a look at the temperature of this hot water, we can see it's, it's actually 
around 80 degrees, which is more than enough. What we're going to do is take a graduated cylinder We're going to take this off the hot plate for a second. We're going to measure out 20 mils. And pour it immediately into our coffee cup here. Again, this is because um, the styrofoam cup is a better insulator than glass. So we want to make sure that we don't lose any heat in this process. So we'll let this stir for about a minute. And we basically want to wait to see when the temperature becomes more or less stable. And this is usually around uh, 50 or 55 degrees. So we're hovering at around 56, which is probably as good as we'll, we'll get it. Make sure that you record this temperature because you won't pick it up on the Logger Pro software, of course. Um, this corresponds to your initial temperature of your hot water. So you'll get that reading. and then immediately pour this water into your calorimeter. Again, holding the calorimeter by the top of the tube. Transferring this as fast as you can without spilling. Place the stopper. And start counting 60 seconds. And then again, you'll let it stand for 100 seconds just to allow the temperature to stabilize. And then once 100 seconds have passed, you'll record the temperature that uh, is being measured. Make sure that you write this down in your lab notebook. And then you can uh, click stop. And uh, that's your first trial. So you'll repeat this again two more times to get three trials to ensure reproducibility. Um, if you happen to notice any water that sits on top of the calorimeter, just wipe it up with some Kleenex. And in between trials, you always want to ensure that you uh, rinse out the calorimeter with some room temperature water. This will remove uh, any leftover heat that might be contained from previous trials. Um, that could interfere with your temperature measurements. So you can just sort of dump that out. You can give it a rinse with your wash bottle or you can use some more of uh, your room temperature water from your beaker. And then to the best of your abilities, dry out the inside of the calorimeter with a Kleenex. And then your calorimeter is ready to go for your next trial. So as mentioned before, you'll repeat this twice more to uh, get three trials of uh, this collection. And your graph should then look something like this. So you've got your three trials here showing um, the temperature of the uh, cool water uh, just before the hot water was added and then the temperature shot up and then stabilized um, over time um, representing your final temperature. Again, make sure that you've recorded the initial temperature of your hot water in your uh, coffee cup before transferring it into your calorimeter. So once you've collected all three trials for determining your heat capacity of your calorimeter, you're going to print screen the view on your laptop by selecting function, print screen, and then uh, pasting the file in a Word document. Then this will allow you to save the, um, the view and um, include uh, a printout of your observations later on. 
So for the next part of the experiment, we're going to still use the same collection method that we used for the first part, but we're going to remove these traces. So to do that, we're going to go data and then select clear all data. And now our graph is ready to go again for the second part of the experiment. So now we have our cleaned out calorimeter and um, we're going to now add 35 mils of our room temperature water to the calorimeter. Replace the probe like you did in the first part. And in the Logger Pro software, click Collect. Holding the calorimeter again like you did previously, shake for about 60 seconds. And let it stand for 100 seconds. Or when the graph has somewhat stabilized the temperature, take a reading and record this in your notebook. This is the initial temperature of the calorimeter with the uh, room temperature water inside. You're then going to obtain some salt. You're working with two salts in this experiment. One is the sodium acetate uh, trihydrate and anhydrous sodium acetate is the other salt. Um, you're going to weigh it out using a weighing bottle and an analytical balance and your first measurement will be one and a half grams of salt. Um, it doesn't matter which salt you start with, uh, as long as you um, continue the remaining measurements for that salt before you switch over to the other salt. When you are weighing the anhydrous sodium acetate in particular, make sure that you transfer it fairly quickly because the anhydrous uh, salt is hygroscopic and uh, will start absorbing moisture from the atmosphere. Also, um, if others are transferring out the anhydrous salt in between, you want to make sure that the lid of the reagent container itself is at least covering the top of the uh, container. So then uh, you'll take that salt once you've weighed it and you will transfer it all into your calorimeter. and transfer it as quickly and as fully as you possibly can, making sure that you don't have a significant amount of salt left over in your weighing bottle because this will affect the uh, concentration of this solution and then might affect your temperature results. So then you will do the same thing as before, shake for about 60 seconds, let your calorimeter stand on the bench for about 100 seconds or until the uh, temperature stabilizes on the program. When you have finished counting, then record the temperature that uh, comes out in your lab notebook and then stop the collection. You'll repeat this uh, process for your other three masses, making sure that in between that the calorimeter is cleaned out. So rinsing it out with some room temperature water and wiping it with, with a tissue. Once you've done all four of your trials, you will get a graph that looks something like this. So this is for one of the two salts that you'll be um, uh, experimenting with. And you'll see again that there's sort of two prominent um, plateaus in the graph corresponding to the initial temperature of the water, a spike when the salt was added, followed by a uh, final temperature of the mixture. Once you have collected these four points, you'll print screen the graph as usual and paste it in your Word file. And make sure that it's saved. You'll then repeat those four trials for the other salt, gather that data, and then carry out your calculations to determine the heat of solution for the two salts.